Hi again, guys. June 10, 2019. Flooding. Flooding. Massive destruction in many new states now. But I want to start this video with a band that starts to play the theme song from the Titanic in a Mexican mall that's flooding. Rain seems to be taking down roofs, causing flooding indoors, all over. And it's not just yeah, the United States. Mexico is having flash flooding. UK is having flash flooding. Germany is having flash flooding. Serbia is having flash flooding. Uganda, China. Oh, and I have no doubt that I'm missing countries. All uh, flash flooding all over the place at the exact same time. So here, listen. Dark, apropos, we're all dancing as the ship goes down, all over, not just in the United States. That's what we're doing. When you see this kind of flooding, when you see this kind of, well, we know our sky is not quite right. This road collapse in Catawba County, just one of dozens across the western Piedmont and foothills. As you just saw, a huge slab of road crumbling, then underneath you can see the dirt had been washed away. A person who uses that road often choosing not to today sharing that video with us tonight. Now to similar scenes across the area, roads washing out as rivers and creeks overflow their banks from 72 hours of relentless rain. Right now, nine rivers in our region have elevated levels. Three are a step below major flooding, which means the flooding could damage property and even take lives. The big message tonight from officials, turn around, don't drown. And if you see flooding across the roadway, don't chance it. And more bad news is the rain isn't going to stop overnight. Take a look. There was, there is a whole lot of bad news. Now, I know that a lot of you know, Kess, Kess who I've not heard from in a long time, who I know lives in Western North Carolina. I have no, I want to hear from you, Kess. If anybody has seen her posting comments on other channels, a woman who posted incredible comments, um, I would really like to hear that she is okay. Uh, th this, this flooding is just, all right, it's the kind of flooding that you would think would really engage people that they would begin to wonder what the hell is going on because this is nothing that we have ever seen before and now we are seeing every single day all across the country roads are being taken out bridges are being taken out interstates are being taken out levees breached um, and the destruction. I, I look. I will admit I am overwhelmed with how many Americans are losing their homes and their businesses, even loved ones, on a daily basis now. So yeah, 
you can just play that theme song to the Titanic because that is what we are doing. Just dancing until the ship finally sinks. Chloe. Let me show you the power of these storms. Take a look here behind me. This is one of the many roads in the foothills that has been washed away tonight. People saying they've never seen this much rain come so quickly. A fawn stranded in the floodwaters near the Rhodus Dam. Incredible video shows two men braving the elements to bring it back to dry land. Dangerously high waters at the Lookout Shoals Dam too. Tons of people snapping pictures and watching the water pour over. I just want to see how high the water was getting. I think it's pretty bad. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of damage from this storm. The Catawba River there crested at 108 feet. I've never seen the dam up this much. It's, it's a lot. The highest level in over 30 years. But this is the worst I've ever seen. I've never seen so much rain. And in Hickory, firefighters making sure people aren't in their apartments after mandatory evacuations because of this flooding and damage. I say about 4, 4.30, we get a knock at the door from the fire chief telling us we just had to go. Lakia Cleveland isn't sure when she'll be able to go home. It was scary. Um, the water was just rushing. It was just, it was crazy. This was the view from her bedroom window this morning. It's basically um, call my rental insurance and wait, wait, wait. As of 3.15, 42 people were at the shelter set up by the Red Cross. Man, that thing looks dangerous. But Mika Sample didn't evacuate. He's waiting it out with no power, no water, and five kids. I ain't never think water could do this. I apologize for the interruption. I don't know if you heard what was the start of a cat fight. Many, many, many cats here, and more and more are showing up and I do not believe that these are feral. These are cats that have been dropped by people. Anyway, let's continue. Nobody who lives along 25th Avenue Northwest is completely stranded, but this means some people will need to take a longer way around for who knows how long. In Hickory, Chloe Lushner, NBC Charlotte. No look, hiding each. This is wake look at this destruction, okay? Storms, rain, Look at this destruction that is taking place. And yes, I do believe that a lot of this is caused by electromagnetic frequencies that they are using to create, modify, manipulate, intensify these storms. Electromagnetic frequencies on a spectrum, the extremely low frequencies that are emitted from Gwen Towers, uh, they go through the ground. These frequencies are, and yeah, it is from structures that look like this. Different from cell towers, Gwen Towers are these very high antennas that have wires coming down to the ground and it completes a 360 circle. And these wires why are they coming down to the ground? Because they are emitting, emitting very powerful, extremely low frequencies through the ground. They can also emit the frequencies into the atmosphere to control weather fronts. But these going through the ground, they can cause earthquakes. They can cause earthquakes and they can cause this kind of destruction loosening up the soil underneath roads. You've got the storms that come and voila, your roads, the roads all over our country now from these storms, from the flooding, from, and it's been going on for months. This is what so many states and counties look like now. Yeah, dancing. We are dancing while they play the theme song to the Titanic. Now, there's an awful lot of people 
who are really hurting across the foothills is causing flooding in some homes along the Catawba River. Owners say they've never seen the water rise this fast in such a short period of time. Our Dave Faraday saw some of that flooding up close. He joins us live from Burke County with a look at some of the damage. Dave? And Liz, I just got some information from Catawba County. They are now estimating as much as 14 inches of rain has fallen over this weekend. If you look behind me, I am in Burke County, Eastern Burke County off McDuffie Road. You can see what some of that rain did. This huge sinkhole opened up last night. I was told by neighbors that the driver was actually able to climb out on his own after driving right into the big hole. The rain stopped this afternoon, but you didn't have to look far to see the power of Mother Nature as millions of gas. Why didn't he show us the car? If he drove into the sinkhole, he didn't was he? I don't know. Maybe they came, a tow truck, and got it out. It's weird. Yeah, um, all these people never seen it before. Oh, you know, see, it's amazing to see it. In a way, it's scary. It's pretty dangerous. Everybody uh, needs to be cautious and look and be safe where you're going and driving. Two miles downriver, this couple was asleep in their camper when the water began rising quickly overnight. They escaped by swimming to the shore, losing their cars and much of what they own. It's devastating. Everything we own. They thought it was odd. Big Bear said they weren't going to raise the water up out the banks. Woke up at 3.30 in the morning and it's under my camper, and both my vehicle's gone, my camper's gone. On Lake Lookout shows the rising water entered some of the homes. Across Catawba County, firefighters have scrambled to rescue drivers during the last 48 hours. This owner says it didn't take long for the lake to rise around his home last night. A lot of the folks around here have lost furniture, floors, appliances, all bad. At a quarter to 11 last night, I had just a touch of water in my yard. At quarter to 12, my yard was covered. And well, they're releasing waters and dams in North Carolina. Um, this also occurred. Heavy rains also knocking down trees. The Lenore Fire Department posted this video of a tree hitting live power lines, causing loud sparking. You see that light flashing from the power lines, and you can even hear the electricity. The department said there's little they can do to fix the problem when this happens until the utility company cuts the power to the lines. They say if you see this happen, stay away. Well, here we go. And now there's a state of emergency for all of Catawba County. The school system there has announced schools will be closed tomorrow due to heavy flooding. Many people had to leave their home due to rising waters. One entire neighborhood was even evacuated. Eyewitness News reporter Stephanie Snoko is outside an apartment complex in Hickory that had to be evacuated entirely. Stephanie, where's everyone staying tonight? Hey, Liz, well, some people are staying with family members. Others are staying at a shelter at CBCC. Now, conditions are obviously way better right now, but look, take a look at what's going on at this very moment. We've got crews right here putting up a new utility utility pole here on the right. But to the left, we have another crew doing the same. But in the middle, you can see that the road is still eroding. It's a lot worse than when we were here earlier at noon. Crews have also fixed part of the pipe, uh, but residents are hoping to return to their home soon. I go over to my door and the water's just rushing in. It's just. Flash flooding pushing families out of their homes. In the backyard is like a sea. The police knocked on everyone's door and saying that we had to leave. As early as 4 a.m. And really, nothing really affects Hickory, so I, I wasn't even really scared. But then as soon as I woke up this morning, I'm like, oh, my God. The Red Cross opened a shelter at CBCC. They're expecting at least 50 residents. Mm, we're going to be out of the apartment. Yeah, well, crew members told me. You know, oh, it's bad, guys. It's really bad. Possible tornado in North Carolina. Deadly flooding. The threat of storms continues today while some are still cleaning up from severe weather over the weekend in our area. The National Weather Service says a possible tornado hit the town of Ellenboro. That's in Rutherford. No roots. Rutherford County on Saturday. Video shows several trees and power lines down, but no injuries. 
have been reported. Three people are dead in North Carolina after their car was swept away in floodwaters. It happened in Lincolnton, north of Gastonia on Saturday. The Highway Patrol says the car hydroplaned off a road, hit a tree, and landed on its side in six feet of water. Three men in that car died. Well, several drivers had to be rescued from flood, flooded roads in North Hydroplaned. Hydroplaned. Uh, we had a earthquake here uh, very close to Anderson, South Carolina. It's but why? Well, when you have these storms and they happen to be right in that area where they have these earthquakes, put it together, electromagnetic frequencies. The extremely low frequencies that, yes, please, don't just say you're crazy because you look like a fool. You look like an ignorant fool. Go to my playlists. Check out the playlist weather modification. Check out the playlist geoengineering. Check out the playlist directed energy weapons. Check out the playlist uh, U.S. flooding, where I have posted an awful lot of evidence. Evidence. Where this earthquake occurred, which was a 2.3, shallow, very shallow. Yes, you know, what is what ha was was referred to as these harp earthquakes, shallow earthquakes. That's a signature that these earthquakes are coming from the use of electromagnetic frequencies in their uh, in this weather modification that is going on and where that earthquake occurred yes it was close to the Hartwell Dam that is sitting on the border of Georgia and South Carolina a big dam very big dam and the earthquake occurred um, just north of it. South Carolina, Greenville. <laughs> People really... This is not just happening in one community. And mainstream media is not giving you the full picture. I have tried to capture as big a picture as I can. So please go to my playlist on my channel, U.S. Floods, and you will see how many videos I have been posting since January of 2018. The flash flooding taking out infrastructure taking out roads, uh, destroying homes, destroying businesses all over the country. These flooded streets that now we are seeing happen virtually every single day all over, it needs to beg questions in people's minds. Why? If you're just going to go with that mainstream media bullshit climate change, you're not going to do any research to find out that that climate change, global warming hysteria coming from our mainstream media reporters, if you're not going to do the research to find out that you're being lied to, then you make yourself a very dangerous individual. Believing lies when it's very clear because most Americans know they're being lied to by mainstream media reporters, by their government officials, by their authority figures. You want to keep believing the liars? You want to keep listening to the liars? That makes you someone who is just as bad and maybe worse than the liar. Liars 
will lie. But it's up to those quote unquote good people to call them out on their lies. Not just stand there and accept it, not just stand there and believe them once again. It's, it's the acceptor of the lie that waters the lie and it grows and it grows. It's the acceptor of lies that give permission to liars to just lie and create their destruction. And it, it, I'm not talking about just government officials. I'm talking about everybody. When you lie to someone who is a friend or a family member or whomever, you betray them. The minute you speak a lie, you betray that person in that you are relating to. Lying is not good. It's bad. And just because a whole lot of people do it, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, acceptable. Lying causes this. Lying causes destruction. A four magnitude earthquake outside of Cleveland in Lake Erie, just north of East Lake. In Lake Erie, when we have our Great Lakes, well, they're at flood level. And people in Northeast Ohio, it felt like a car hit my home. No damage reported from First Energy's Perry nuclear power plant in Perry Township. The most you would typically see from a quake like this is something knocked from a shelf or a picture that wasn't on the wall very well might fall, something like that. Well, when someone is feeling their whole house shake, um, it's a little bit more than that. A four in Lake Erie. Well, guess what? A whole lot of extremely low frequencies are set off right in this area. If you have storms, you've got man-made, you know, those man-induced frequencies happening because all weather is controlled. Wake County, I believe this is North Carolina. Yes, North Carolina. This weekend was part of our new normal. New normal. Roy Cooper absolutely knows that man is controlling the weather. Man is modifying the weather, intensifying the weather. Roy Cooper, he is put in charge of North Carolina to bring about Agenda 2030. Yes, I said a lot about Roy Cooper during those hurricanes last year. This is not a good man. Not a good man. We need Americans to find the courage to confront people who are not good. You know, we kind of have this social contract with one another where, you know, we keep one another in line morally speaking well that has come and gone it's got to come back it has to come back these people are destroying you they're destroying you and yeah you know if americans understood that they are at war and man is using unconventional weapons then Maybe they would rise and fight. Maybe. I don't know. Because it doesn't seem like too many Americans have the courage to fight anything today. And hey, it's easy just not to care. And then you start caring. When this is brought to you, it's brought to you. Ah, but then you're in real self-centered mode because that's what the mode of 
surviving does to you. So we need people fighting this war who are not in survival mode, but they're just not available. Look at this massive destruction from rain. Well, a two-year-old from Kentucky is now dead after rising water swept him away in Middle Tennessee. It happened at the Cummins Falls State Park in Jackson County. Park officials have identified the child as Stephen Pierce. They found his body this morning around 7:15. Park rangers evacuated 64 people from rising waters yesterday. They said the water rose quickly. The uh, family was exiting the gorge uh, as the water was rising. Uh, they were attempting to cross the river. And again, to our knowledge, while they were crossing the river, uh, they were swept away. Two-year-old dead. A two-year-old dead. People are dying. Children are dying. Wildlife is dying. And let's just dance to the theme song of Titanic. Nobody was hurt. That's really the good thing. Nobody was in this car or a car right next to it that has since been moved. When, as you can see, it snapped right there at the base, and then this tree came smashing down, crushing the roof here and the hood as well. And because of all that heavy rain and wind, as it typically does, there was awfully, awful lot of flooding here along Wymore Road as well. The storm cell that pounded areas of Seminole County south of the mall dumped plenty of rain and some say hail during the mid-afternoon. Cars and trucks were moving ever so slowly as water splashed up to the doors and into the upper tire wells along Wymore Road, a place notorious for flooding during storms. Notorious. Central Florida. Central Florida. fungal disease. Trees just uprooting. How much? How much can Americans take? A whole lot, clearly. Arkansas. Can't really believe it's actually happening. Boats are the only way in. This is actually a road right here. The trip to Sunny Gillies weekend getaway on the river. And this is our homestead here. Drifts farther away from an escape as flood water swells through Pendleton. We're trying to check and make sure that we're still there. His houseboat is intact. We have to make sure that these pipes are holding up and the anchors because there's such a bad current. But almost all of his neighbor's homes are underwater. It's just every time you turn around, they were increasing it, increasing it. It was higher and it got higher and it got higher. Passing the damage, he knows recovery won't be easy since many couldn't afford flood insurance. You know, as these folks here, even though they had time to prepare, but where do you take something when you don't have nowhere to take it to? Well, the water... Right. Where do you go when you have no place to go? Okay, tens of thousands of Americans are facing that right now. Central Texas. This afternoon, folks in Copper's Cove are picking up the pieces after a powerful storm, which may have been a tornado, caused some serious damage. Chelsea Edwards joins us live right now from the middle of the mess out in Copper's Cove. Chelsea, what are you hearing from officials? They tell me that the National Weather Service is now in the area. They'll be making the rounds today, assessing damage to determine whether this storm could be called a tornado. This will definitely be one of the stops here based on residents' experiences last night. That's what they have already been calling it. Nearly 200 homes in the neighborhoods off of Big Divide Road have reported storm damage. Roofs caved in or blown off, fences down, and large trees pulled up or turn, torn apart. Now, TxDOT is working with Coryell County Road and Bridge Department to clear streets and highways after what many residents say was a frightening scene that they just weren't prepared for. I heard the transformer blow, and once we heard that, we just made sure everything was uh, secured. And uh, at that point, that's when I heard um, 
glass shattering, so we all rushed over to the to the bathroom and kind of uh, sheltered in the bathroom. And uh, at that point, we just kept hearing uh, um, windows breaking, and uh, that's pretty much it. Did you have that's the owner of one of three homes that received the most damage. Those were uh, deemed unlivable, but his family and the others are okay. As a matter of fact, no injuries were recorded at all during last night's storm. Coppers Cove City staff also have eyes on the ground today assessing damage. So, if you've been paying attention, you understand that, ah, tornadoes. Well, we don't know if it was a tornado, so we've got to assess the situation. Really, radar is not picking up tornadoes. That means these people had no warning of a tornado. If they don't know that it was a tornado, they've got to assess it the next day. Something's wrong with that. Now, I want to play you this video. All right. Uh, rotating clouds during storms in Hudo, uh, that's in, that is uh, just north of Austin, Texas. Wait a second. See, they, they don't give me the bar to put it back. All right. These are the, 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 the really? Really. That's a, that's, a natural, what, uh, thunder storm cloud? What? That is a cloud being made by electromagnetic. Well, good afternoon. I want to start by letting you know that we have a big day coming up. Electromagnetic frequencies. I also want to show you pictures that were sent to me by a subscriber right taken right before this storm. So here, these pictures were taken shortly before we left Frisco yesterday. Uh, I took pictures because it looked so odd. Within an hour to two hours after I took these photos, Dallas had these bad storms. And these storms came from the north. Very weird because storms normally come from southwest and move northeast here in Texas. Well, with frequencies that man is using, these storms can move anywhere. Really? That's a natural sky? No, it's not. Not at all. You can see all of the frequencies in use. Here, this was in Dallas, October 2018. So if you're in the midst of this, you think, ah, it's just rain. But if you're outside of it and you're, wow, okay, that's unusual, isn't it? Rain bombs. Rain bombs. Look at this. This was uh, an amazing cloud evaporating water from sea. I think it's in India, but I'm not sure. Today's cold news. Today's date is 38 2015. This is the view you are seeing. Hanumana Dam, which is created by nature, which is what the people of the village are saying. And the water is taking up. You are seeing it on the video. Look at it. You are seeing it. You are seeing it. ये बिल्कुल आसमान से गिरा है गोल टाइप का देखिए भाइयों आपको मैं ये दृश्य दिखा रहा हूँ ये हनुमान डैम का बिहार का है ये दिनांक आज एक तीस आठ दो हजार पंद्रह का न्यूज है ये मैं अभी दिखा रहा हूँ मिनट पे अभी से तीन चार मिनट पहले ये गिरा है हम लोग लाइव देख देख ये देखिए सुंड किस तरह ऊपर जा रहा पानी है ये देखिए ये देखिए ये पूरा जो डैम दिख रहा है आपको so, <clears throat> electromagnetic frequencies can do a whole lot. 
Here, hurricane in India pulling water up in the sky. They can literally load clouds with an awful lot of water vapor. And then they can move those clouds over to particular areas. Look at this ring that forms. It formed almost like a hose. Yeah. You know, people really just have no clue that man can do an awful lot. Here's a rain bomb in Arizona. and a rain bomb, a rare wet microburst caught on camera. And guess what? Photographer and monsoon chaser Brian Snyder was taking time-lapse footage of a storm in the Tucson area when he captured this incredible weather event. A wet microburst. Yeah, when cold hair hits warm air and yada yada yada. Well, I'm my channel. I have an awful lot of documents and uh, patents that show, hey, extremely, um, extremely, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, whether microwaves or extremely low frequencies or the high frequencies that they shoot up into the ionosphere. And yes, they can steer the jet stream and they can steer weather fronts and they can steer air masses and collide those air masses to bring about microbursts. All links are below.